Good evening, everyone. I'm Garrett Blado. Uh, first of all, my wife and I did not color coordinate this morning. Uh, and secondly, and far more importantly, uh, a warning tonight, you, this is a talk about animal husbandry, and you will see cattle in sexual situations. So, uh, I'm from North Dakota, which most of you have probably never seen or heard of. Uh, it's near Canada, it's white with snow, and cows outnumber people two and a half to one. Uh, L7 Ranch is the ranch that my father and I co-own, and we have four no nuclear weapons. Uh, in the uh, 1980s, though, seriously, uh, family farming was in a major crisis. There was large tax penalties, uh, family farmers could not make it on their own. In fact, my father had to seek a second job, or my father had to seek a second job. Uh, and during this time, early 90s, uh, I was growing up. Uh, I am a two-time national livestock jumping champion of the uh, for future farmers of America. Uh, and what does that really mean? Uh, so there are two parts of this. There's a, livestock judging has typically uh, classes uh, for sheep, hogs, and beef. Uh, you have uh, four animals, they bring them out, you rate them best to worst, one through four, and then afterwards you go and you give the, a judge your bullshit answers on why you did that, and if you can convince the judge of why you're better than him, you win. Uh, secondly, there's another data element, and that's called a keep call class. Uh, with keep call class, they give you a bunch of numbers, and you look at, it, look at them and determine which cows you want to keep and which ones you want to give to slaughter. These are what the numbers look like. These are expected progency uh, differences. And typically you get uh, you know, a bull pinup, and then you see uh, the, uh, the sire and maternal sides of the genetic lines of these cattle. Uh, lots of these are uh, different things. The sires have uh, specific uh, things that go along with them and the numbers that you want to crunch, specifically like birth weight after a year, their weaning weight, uh, their docility, how well they're going to be, and obviously how big their balls are. Uh, secondly, uh, this is a bull. This is a yearling bull. Uh, that, and I want to explain first that a, a bull has balls, a steer has been castrated, and it has no balls. That is the difference, and now you know. Uh, so, secondly, the second line that we're very considerate of is the maternal line, right? And it's how much milk is the, from the, would we expect to get from the cow, how much uh, weight would we expect because of uh, mating with different animals, uh, how much we expect that mature animal to uh, be height. And this is a sexy cow. And mind you, uh, this is a cow, this is not a heifer. And to explain the difference, a heifer is a virgin cow and has not had their first baby. They may have been like, I not, but they haven't had their first uh, baby yet, and after they had their first baby, they become a cow. Uh, secondly, uh, what is all this jibber-jabber about? It's really math, right? And me being a computer scientist and thinking like a computer, uh, I was really, really good at putting this math to work. Specifically in this realm, I was actually putting my way through my first year of college by buying cattle for people. But then I thought, why be a sucker? I can buy cattle for other people or I can buy them for myself. Uh, and so this is when I tried to convince uh, this man in the middle that uh, it would be a pretty good idea if we got into uh, genetic marketing of, of cattle and sold bull sperm as, as a commodity. Um, that wasn't easy, mind you. Uh, He's now putting his faith into us. And so, how do you get bull sperm? Uh, these are not, these are not, so both, these are two methods that we do not employ on our farm. One is a bull condom because it's messy. And secondly is the Electrojack 6, which is the newest generation of Electrojack. It has an electrical thing. Uh, stimulates the prostate, you, you got it. Anyways, this is the method that we use. It's actually an artificial resina. I have a man, his name's Keith. Uh, Keith uh, comes up, uh, the bull has a uh, cow in heat, the bull comes up, uh, he sticks his uh, weenie in a artificial vagina, Keith gathers it, and you got it. Uh, typically after that, we cryogenically freeze the sperm uh, into uh, what we consider what they call the straws. And this is 0.25 for a small straw, or 0.5 millimeters for a large straw. That is cryogenically shipped in liquid nitrogen. Uh, we then sp uh, spread, uh, ship this worldwide. In fact, L7 Ranch is probably the largest provider of sperm for Wagyu beef in Japan. Uh, we ship all of this uh, by the UPS. Again, that guy's name is Charles, but he shows up every once in a while. Uh, Wagyu beef is different from Kobe beef. Uh, Kobe beef uh, is a specific type of cattle grown, uh, grown in the Kobe region. Wagyu beef also grown in the Kobe region. However, they are crossbred with Angus cattle, and that's why we do it. Uh, so, uh, L7 Ranch, if you're eating Kobe beef in Baltimore, 
you are not eating real Kobe beef, you're eating L7 Ranch beef, which is Wagyu style, Kobe style beef. Uh, in fact, uh, this has actually saved us in the 80s and 90s. My father and I were able to sustain the farm. My, back, my father has still got a second time job. He calls us his hobby farm. We've grown from 800, 800 cattle to 1,400 cattle. And we get to do this, uh, as a, I get to do this as a side job, and my father gets to do the job he loves and live on the farm. Thank you.